Hi, I'm Catherine, the Ranking Gal. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up by smashing that like button down below and be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell so you don't miss our next video. We really hope you enjoy our video and thanks for watching. In today's Pass Happy NFL, the star receiver may be the second most important person on most teams, so it seemed right to do a ranking video on the greatest receivers of all time. I've been watching football passionately since 1965, so I was fortunate enough to see 23 of the 25 receivers in my rankings and 37 of the 40 receivers that are mentioned in this video. So the first criterion that I used was the all-important eye test, but I also studied everyone's statistics and accomplishments as well as other numerous ranking lists. Of course, modern receivers' reception numbers are inflated compared to past receivers, so I did my best to compare each receiver's numbers with receivers in their eras to decide on their rankings. And some receivers' careers were much shorter than others, so how much you weigh that factor will affect your rankings. And since they are not quarterbacks, championships won had almost no influence on my rankings. Hi, and welcome to another video from Ultimate Rankings. I'm Mark, the Ranking Guy. The rankings on our channel are the result of serious research and relative criteria unlike the many other fluff videos out there. The goal of our channel is to bring you the most accurate, interesting, and informative top 25 rankings in all of sports and entertainment. Let's get to the rankings. At number 25 we have Reggie Wayne, who is 10th all time in both reception yards and number of receptions, and 2nd all time with career playoff receptions with 97. He went for over 1,000 receiving yards eight times, including the league-leading 1,510 yards in 2007. He was first-team All-Pro once, second-team All-Pro twice, and was a six-time Pro Bowler. At number 24, we have Andre Reid, who is 17th all-time in reception yards, 18th all-time in receptions, and 14th in receiving touchdowns. He excelled in the playoffs, where he was sixth all-time in receptions, fifth all-time in receiving yards, and ninth in touchdowns. He played in four Super Bowls. He was second-team All-Pro twice and was a seven-time Pro Bowler. At number 23, we have Steve Smith Sr., who was only five foot nine inches tall, but was big on the field, especially in 2005 when he led the league in receptions, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns. He is eighth all-time in reception yards and 12th all-time in receptions. He was first-team All-Pro twice, second-team All-Pro once, and was a five-time Pro Bowler. At number 22, we had Fred Blitnikoff, who had unbelievable hands and led the league in receptions in 1971. He was the MVP of Super Bowl XI, won an AFL championship, and gained over 100 yards in five postseason games. He was first team All-Pro once and was a six-time Pro Bowler in the NFL. And in the AFL, he was first team All-Pro once and twice a Pro Bowler. At number 21, we have Isaac Bruce, who is one of the main weapons for the greatest show on turf. He is 5th all-time in reception yards, 13th all-time in receptions, and 12th in receiving touchdowns. He won a Super Bowl, was second team All-Pro twice, and was a four-time Pro Bowler. At number 20, we have Sterling Sharp, who led the league in reception three times, receiving touchdowns twice, and receiving yards in 1992, when he led all three categories. He became the first player to have over 100 reception in consecutive seasons, setting a single season record each time. Unfortunately, his career was cut short due to a neck injury after just seven seasons, or who knows how many records he would have set. He was first team All-Pro three times and was a five-time Pro Bowler. At number 19, we have Elroy Crazy Legs Hirsch, who led the league in receptions with 66 and 1,495 receiving yards in 1951, which set an NFL record that stood for nearly 20 years. His 124.6 yards per game also set an NFL record. He averaged a remarkable 18.4 yards per reception, fourth on the list, and 6.5 touchdowns per reception, sixth on the list. He also scored 60 receiving touchdowns in his career, impressive for that era. He won one NFL championship, was first team All-Pro two times, and was a three-time Pro Bowler. At number 18, we have Antonio Brown, who's a very talented but at times troubled receiver. He had four consecutive seasons with 100 receptions and led the league twice in receptions. He was first team All-Pro four straight seasons, second team All-Pro once, and was a seven-time Pro Bowler. Yep. At number 17, we have Andre Johnson who was 11th all-time in both reception yards and number of receptions. He led the league in both receptions and receiving yards twice. He was first team All-Pro three times, second team All-Pro twice, and was a seven-time Pro Bowler. At number 16, we have Charlie Taylor, who had excellent hands, was a great runner, and led the league in receptions twice. 
When he retired, he was the NFL's all-time leader in receptions with 649 and had a record time seven seasons of 50 or more receptions. He was first team All-Pro once, second team All-Pro four times, and impressively was an eight-time Pro Bowler. At number 15, we have Bullet Bob Hayes. This 100-meter gold medalist was the fastest man alive when he entered the league, and his speed was a huge reason zone defenses became popular. He averaged a remarkable 20 yards per reception, second on the list, and 5.2 touchdowns per reception, third on the list. He won one Super Bowl, he was first team All-Pro twice, second team All-Pro once, and was a three-time Pro Bowler. At number 14, we have Paul Warfield who averaged an amazing 20.1 yards per reception, first on the list, and 5.2 touchdowns per reception, second on the list. He is still impressively 16th in receiving touchdowns with 85, and had four seasons with double-digit receiving touchdowns. He won three NFL championships, including two Super Bowls. He was first team All-Pro twice, second team All-Pro three times, and was an eight-time Pro Bowler. At number 13, we have Raymond Berry who had the best hands and ran the most precise routes of his generation. He led the league in both receptions and receiving yards three times and receiving touchdowns twice. He won two NFL championships. He was first team All-Pro four times, second team All-Pro twice, and was a six-time Pro Bowler. At number 12, we have Calvin Johnson, who is known as Megatron, and he retired at age 30 after just nine years in the league. And he was the most dominant receiver in the league for three straight seasons. Probably the best physical specimen of all time, at the receiver position at six foot five inches, 240 pounds, and he ran a 4.27 40 yard dash. He holds a single season receiving yards record with 1,964 in 2007. He was first team All-Pro three times, second team All-Pro once, and he was a six time Pro Bowler. At number 11, we have Tim Brown. This extremely consistent performer is seventh all time in both reception yards and number of receptions, and ninth in receiving touchdowns. This former Heisman Trophy winner was a deadly runner in the open field. He gained over 1,000 receiving yards in amazing nine straight seasons. He was first team All-Pro once, second team All-Pro twice, and was a nine-time Pro Bowler. Before we get to the top 10, I want to mention some honorable mentions. I'll call them my Fantastic 15, which are in alphabetical order. Anquan Bolden, Henry Ellard, Tom Fears, Torrey Holt, Michael Irvin, Charlie Joyner, Don Maynard, Art Monk, Herman Moore, Drew Pearson, Jimmy Smith, Rod Smith, John Stalworth, Lynn Swan, and Heinz Ward. At number 10, we have Steve Largent, who at the time of his retirement impressively held the career record in receptions, yardage, and touchdowns. Mr. Consistent is still ninth all-time in receiving receptions with 100, famously breaking Don Hudson's 44-year-old record of 99. He led the league in receiving yards twice and had eight 1,000-yard seasons. He was first team All-Pro once, second team All-Pro four times, and was a seven-time Pro Bowler. At number nine, we have Chris Carter, who famously, all he did was catch touchdowns, and his fourth all-time with 130, and caught a touchdown once every 8.5 receptions. He is 13th all-time in reception yards and sixth all-time in receptions. He gained over 1,000 receiving yards in impressive eight straight seasons. He was first team All-Pro twice, second team All-Pro once, and was an eight-time Pro Bowler. At number eight, we have James Lofton, who was the league all-time leader in receiving yards when he retired and is currently 12. He used his great speed to average an awesome 18.3 yards per catch, first on the list of the players who started their career after the merger in 1970. He was first team All-Pro once, second team All-Pro three times, and was remarkably an eight-time Pro Bowler. At number seven, we have Larry Fitzgerald, who perhaps has the best hands of his generation. He is second all-time in both reception yards and number of receptions, and is sixth in receiving touchdowns. He led the league in receptions and receiving touchdowns twice, and had nine seasons of over 1,000 yards. He was first team All-Pro once, second team All-Pro twice, and was a Pro Bowler an amazing 11 times. At number six, we have Marvin Harrison, who is ninth all-time in reception yards, fifth all-time in receptions, and receiving touchdowns in a very consistent career. He caught double-digit touchdowns in eight straight seasons. He led the league in receiving yards and receptions twice each and receiving touchdowns once. He was first team All-Pro three times, second team All-Pro five times, and impressively an eight-time Pro Bowler. At number five, we have Terrell Owens, who's third all-time in reception yards, eighth all-time in receptions, and third in receiving touchdowns. He catches a touchdown every seven receptions, second among the modern receivers on this list. 
His most impressive performance was probably in the Super Bowl, playing seven weeks after he fractured his fibula and against doctor's advice. He caught nine receptions for 122 yards. He was first team all pro and impressive five times and was a six time pro bowler. At number four, we have Lance Allworth, who was the best receiver of the 1960s and went for over 1,000 receiving yards in awesome seven straight seasons, unheard of for his era. He is still impressively 16th in receiving touchdowns with 85 and holds the record for the most 70 plus yards touchdown receptions over a career with 12. He averaged remarkable 18.9 yards per reception, third on the list, and 6.4 touchdowns per reception, fifth on the list. He led the league in receptions, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns three times each. He won an AFL championship and a Super Bowl. In the AFL, he was player of the year, he was first team all pro six times, second team all pro once, and was a seven time pro bowler. At number three, we have Randy Moss, probably the most gifted receiver ever, and with his long arms on a six foot four inch frame, 4.24 40 yard speed, and a reported 40 inch vertical leap, he was impossible to cover. He averaged an impressive 6.3 touchdowns per reception, third on the list, first of the modern receivers. He is fourth all-time in reception yards, 15th all-time in receptions, and second in receiving touchdowns. He led the league in receiving touchdowns five times and holds the league record for touchdowns in a season with 23. He was first team All-Pro four times and was a six-time Pro Bowler. At number two, we have Don Hudson, who is probably the most statistically dominant player in NFL history, holding 19 NFL records when he retired in just 11 seasons of play. He still holds the record for most touchdowns per game at .85. He caught a touchdown for every 4.9 receptions, lowest on the list, and he averaged 16.4 yards per catch, fifth on the list. He led the league in receiving touchdowns nine times, receptions eight times, and receiving yards seven times, and is amazingly still 11th in receiving touchdowns. When he retired, he had more than twice as many touchdown receptions as any other receiver in history, and it took 44 years to break his record of 99 career touchdown receptions. He won three NFL championships. He was the MVP twice, the only receiver ever to do so. He was first team all pro eight times, and he was a four time pro bowler. Hi again, if you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up by smashing that like button down below and be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell so you don't miss our next video. We really hope you enjoyed our video and I am dying to find out who's number one. And of course at number one we have Jerry Rice, who was first all time in reception yards, number of receptions, and number of receiving touchdowns with 197. He led the league in receiving yards and touchdowns six times each and in receptions twice. But his most impressive accomplishment might have been his 22 touchdown campaign in 1987 in just 12 games. He won three Super Bowls, once winning the Super Bowl MVP, was twice NFL Player of the Year. He was first team All-Pro remarkable 10 times, second team All-Pro once, and was a Pro Bowl in astounding 13 times. Hey, just a reminder that we do both sports and entertainment ranking videos so please check them all out at our video channel. We don't expect anyone to completely agree with our rankings, so please let us know what your rankings are and what you agree and disagree with in the comments section. And feel free to let us know what ranking videos you'd like to see next. And thanks for watching.